I'll show you how to use a bead and other simple materials to make a kettle or a teapot. The roundness of this bead will be the top of the kettle, so I drew a line where I thought the lid would be, although I end up changing that later. For the sides of the kettle, I'm using paper. I'm using cardstock since it's strong, and I'm wrapping it around a sharpie to give it a curved shape. I made a pencil mark where the ends of the paper meet, glued them together, and held it together with tape temporarily while it dries. I wanted to cut it so the two pieces of paper meet rather than overlap to prevent any bulkiness. The bead I'm using is made of plastic, so I'm using Fabri-Tac to attach it to the paper ring. I really love Fabri-Tac because it grabs hold so quickly and I can use it on a range of materials. I've been hearing really good things about Beacon 3-in-1 which has a similar look to Fabri-Tac so I think I'll be trying that out next. I glued the whole thing to a small piece of cardstock and cut away the excess. This came together really quickly and so far I have the top of the kettle, the sides, and the bottom. The bead I used is about 3 quarters of an inch in diameter, so the finished kettle is around that size. I'm using this kettle in a 112 scale project, so the finished kettle is the equivalent of 9 inches in diameter. To keep your project in scale, pay attention to the diameter of the bead you choose. The cardstock has some ridges from being rounded, so I'm using a fine emery board to remove some of it. There's a ridge where the cardstock meets the bead, so I'm using my emery board to smooth that out as well. If you use a different material to make your kettle, you may be able to skip this step. You could use one of these little plastic pipettes since it has the perfect shape at the top. I attended a wedding that served boozy cupcakes, so I walked around the tables and rescued these to save them from the trash. You could get creative because these large glue sticks would also work. To change the blunt end of the glue stick, I'm heating it up over an open flame. The candle melts some of the glue and I keep it spitting as it cools. You'll be familiar with this technique if you saw my video for making DIY bottles. When it cools, it has a nice domed top. You could shave the end of a wooden dowel, or you could make your kettle or teapot out of something really quirky like this wooden thread spool. For the bead kettle, I'm using a piece of thin wire to create the illusion of a lid. To shape it, I wrapped it around the handle of a paintbrush. I don't know what gauge this wire is, but if you use the wire from Twist Ties, it's the same size as that. For a little added detail at the bottom, I added another ring of wire. I used liquid super glue to attach the wire. To make the spout, I'm using a bamboo skewer. I'm using my emery board to make an angle at the end where I can glue it to the side of the kettle. I'm just making a slight angle so the stick isn't sticking straight out. To give the spout a taper like you'd see on a real kettle or teapot, I'm using my flat needle file. I got a set of 12 needle files at Harbor Freight for $5. To make the taper, I'm just focusing on angling one side of it and leaving the other side of the bamboo skewer straight. This detail only took me a few seconds and I really think it adds a lot to the realism in the end. To make the handle, I made a curve in a piece of paper with a hole punch and cut a small strip. I used the hole punch so I would have this neat little curve that fits around the spout of the kettle. For the handle on top of the lid, I'm using one of these beads I got from a silica packet. They'll fall right into the hole on the bead, so I'm plugging it up with a sequin. To give the handle some strength and dimension, I'm using some wood glue. White glue tends to deflate as it dries, but wood glue holds its dimension really nicely. In a small scale, the little details really add up, so I'm using my drill to make a hole at the end of the spout. To prevent splitting the spout, I started with a small drill bit and then went larger. This is the point where I realized the lid was too big, so I removed it and added a smaller ring. To cover up some of the super glue mess and hide the sequin, I'm using some more wood glue. I first saw this trick used by Aira from Bentley House Minis in her abandoned coffee shop project. 
so far in my own projects, I've used it on wood, plastic, clay, and paper, and it sticks to everything and gives a nice hard finish. The wood glue is dry, so I'm giving the kettle a coat of white acrylic paint. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but this is when I realized the ridges of the paper were still visible. This can be remedied by adding wood glue over the entire kettle. You can either leave the lumpiness or apply a coat of wood glue like I ultimately do, but regardless, I would still sand the paper either way because the ridges could be visible even through the wood glue. Once the paint dried, I applied the wood glue with a brush. It's tempting to apply a really thick coat, but it could end up pooling at the bottom of the kettle, so I applied three thin coats. I let the wood glue dry between each layer and I added it to the spout as well. I guess I wasn't feeling very adventurous when I chose the color scheme because I mixed a little bit of tan into the white to spice things up. You could obviously choose a more interesting color palette or maybe even use some nail art or water slide decals to add some decoration. If you're extra adventurous, you could even hand paint some flowers. This looks so stinking cute and I'm using black on the handle and the knob. To achieve a tidy paint job on something like this, I use a really small brush and then I go back in with the base coat to cover up any areas I accidentally go out of the lines. To give it a nice sheen and make it look more like metal, I'm using a coat of Dimensional Magic from Mod Podge. This product is advertised as giving a resin-like finish and I think it's pretty close. I considered using UV resin, but I didn't feel like dealing with it since it's toxic. I didn't use regular Mod Podge because it always leaves brush strokes and I avoid using it on things that are supposed to be smooth. I'm trying out my very first ever oil wash using some oil paint and odorless mineral spirits. I'm using a piece of plastic that can't be recycled to mix it in. I didn't want to make too much, so I added a little tiny bit of oil paint and a small amount of mineral spirits. I added the mineral spirits to a separate container to avoid splashing it or adding way too much. I've heard oil washes don't store very well, so I didn't want to make an excessive amount. I'm starting by testing it on the bottom, and I realize it's a little too thin, so I added a bit more paint. I'm applying an even coat over the entire kettle, and I'm really impressed with how the oil paint sticks to the surface. I usually used watered-down acrylic paint for washes, and it'll normally just run right to the bottom, and it won't stay on a smooth middle part like it is here. To control the amount of age, I'm removing some of it with a paper towel while it's still wet. I was so worried about having too heavy of a layer of aging that I actually ended up removing most of the oil paint I applied. There's really no need to worry because one of the benefits of using an oil wash is being able to remove it easily even after it dries. To remove it once it dries, you just use a little bit of mineral spirits on a q-tip. After removing all of the oil wash, I went back in and added another layer and removed far less. I wasn't sure if the oil paint and mineral spirits mixture would affect the water-based dimensional magic from Mod Podge, but it didn't at all. I cleaned the brush with mineral spirits and stored it in a glass jar because you can't pour this down your drain or outside. When stored in a glass jar, the pigment will settle at the bottom and you can actually reuse the mineral spirits. If any of you make your own kettle or teapot, I'd love to know what material you use.